Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Radio K Sports. I am Trask Angel alongside Connor Mockney, and we are very excited to bring you the first edition of Gopher Men's Baseball in 2021. We are just about ready to get underway here in Minneapolis as the Gophers are hosting Indiana for the very first game at U.S. Bank Stadium of this season. Uh, Connor, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Happy to be here, that's for sure. We are uh, underway here in the first inning. Count is one and two to the Indiana leadoff man, and this ball is going to be fouled back and into the netting. So we have a count of one and two. A few fans here assigned seating, though, today. Yeah, kind of weird. It was uh, you know, weird to hear that they are getting assigned to their seats. Usually it's the other way around. Drew Ashley in the box for the Hoosiers, and that pitch is high and outside, and that's strike three swinging through. So Minnesota is going to start off the season with a strikeout. And next up for the Hoosiers will be number two, Cole Barr, the third baseman. Pitch is in there for the first strike, swinging through it. Minnesota starting their 21, 20, 21 season, excuse me, under John Anderson, his 40th season. He's got 1,300 plus wins in his career for the Gophers. Is that good? You know, it's pretty good. Um, you know, I'd like to see up in like the 1,400s, yeah. preferably. Yeah, um, same. But, you know, he, he, he can get some work in the next few years. Second pitch is a swing and a miss. And pitch number three is a swing and a miss. So three pitches, three strikes, three swings and misses. And we have two strikes to start this first inning here at U.S. Bank Stadium. Good start so far for Sam Ireland. He's been uh, mowing him down, putting him in the zone. And Indiana hasn't been able to touch him yet. So good start. And excuse me, I misspoke earlier. Grant Richardson, the center fielder, hit second. And so now we have Cole Barr, the third baseman, number two. First pitch is a ball. Two outs here in the first inning, Minnesota and Indiana. Right down the middle for pitch number two, and that's going to be a strike, one and one count. I like to see Ireland starting off being pretty effective here. He's not messing around. He's attacking these hitters. Fastball in the outside corner doesn't go. Just wide, two and one. U.S. Bank Stadium all lit up. Tearing down the outside of the stadium, though, as we were walking in. Yeah, that was a sight for sore eyes, to be sure. Ireland's pitch is on the outside corner and swung through and missed by Barr. So it'll be a second strike, two and two count. As Ireland has looked really good here so far, not a lot of contact. And as I say that, we have a ball hit sharply down the right field line. Barr quickly around first, fielded in the corner, and it's going to be brought in. He'll hold up at second. So our first hit of the game is a double down the right field line for number two, Cole Barr. Spoke a little too soon there as he uh, roped that one right into the corner, right down the line. I did. We're not even a full inning into the baseball season. I'm already jinxing us. Yeah. Ooh, off to a great start. So Minnesota will have two outs with a runner on second. Ireland will switch to the stretch. Up now for the Indiana Hoosiers he is number 21, the first baseman, Jordan Fucci. Fucci, a left-handed hitter. Minnesota playing pretty much straight up on him. Long look into the catcher. Setting up inside and low. And he'll miss outside, ball one. That one looked to have slipped out of his hand there. Did not go where he was intending, that's for sure. It looks like we have some uh, fake crowd noise being pumped into the stadium. A little surprising. We have a 
swing and a miss on a low pitch in the dirt, or turf, I guess I should say. One and one count. You know, we have this nice open box to the field. Um, but yeah, that's got, I mean, that's definitely coming from the speakers. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about fake fan noise. I, I don't know. I think it's kind of, everybody here knows. It's not a secret that nobody's here. Yeah. I mean, we have some fans. Yeah, we have. I'd say more Indiana fans than Gopher fans. Yeah, kind of surprising looking now. Yeah, definitely. Two, or excuse me, one and two count. To the number four batter, Fucci, for the Hoosiers. Sam Ireland looks in, and this one is roped down the right field line into the corner. That's going to score a run. Fucci around first, and he's going to dive head first into second base. Throw is not in time, and just like that, Minnesota is down 1-0 in the first. Yep, he put it right in the exact same spot as uh, Barr did. The, uh, at bat before so you know they're uh, starting to line up Ireland after his quick start with the first two hitters so Minnesota the inning continues still two outs as Paul Totes will be up for the Hoosiers number five second baseman this pitch is right at his hands and he'll foul it off so quick 0-1 count Minnesota still straight up in the field and still with a runner on second Let's see if Ireland tries to attack here. Got to get out of this inning now before you start uh, letting up a lot more runs. Pitch from Ireland is right down the middle and will be called for strike two, so 0-2 count. Indiana with two hits and a run so far here in the top of the first. Radio K Sports bringing this game to you live from U.S. Bank Stadium. Ireland looks back at second. Now he'll deliver. He's going to miss outside. So it'll be one and two against the number five man for Indiana. Totes the righty. 333 average on the season. Looks that one in and it's going to be strike three. Called looking and Minnesota will get out of a bit of a jam with two outs there, so they'll leave the inning with one runner on, but one run across for Indiana. We'll take a break here on Radio K Sports, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back here to the bottom of the first. Uh, we're going to go through Minnesota's lineup real quick just because we had missed that at the beginning. 
So leading off and playing left field is Andrew Wilhite at second base and batting second is Zach Robbie. Batting third at third base is going to be Jack Wassel. The pitcher is Sam Ireland will be batting fourth. Jack Kelly, the right fielder, will be uh, hitting fifth. Uh, Easton Bertrand will be hitting sixth, playing center. Chad Stanky will be playing catcher, and he will be hitting seventh. Uh, Ronald Sweeney will be playing first base and hitting eighth. And then batting ninth is a shortstop, Drew Stahl. Thank you, Connor. While you're talking, Minnesota records its first out of the inning. Will Height flies out to a shallow center field. And so Indiana will start this inning with nobody on, one out. Pitching for Indiana is Tommy Summer, number 19. And in the box for Minnesota is number two for the Golden Gophers. And this ball is skied to right field, but will be handled by Murison, the right fielder. And will be two quick outs for the Gophers. Not the start you're looking for on offense. Uh, you saw Indiana put up one on the board. Uh, and you're really going to look to want to match that right here to set that tone for your offense. So Robbie flies out to right field. Will Height flies out to center. Standing in for the Gophers now, Wassel, the senior lefty. And he'll watch ball, or excuse me, strike one called on the outside corner. That was a generous call there, I would say. I say I didn't watch it all the way in, but and that one looks like it was right about that same spot. Yeah, gave him the call there too. Strike two on the outside corner. So Wassel's going to be fighting from behind. As Summer is humming right now for the Hoosiers. His third pitch is going to be high and outside, looking to hit that same spot. And that'll be ball one. I would go back to the well a third time, too, if I was getting those calls. We'll see what he does here in the windup. Summer will look in and throw. This time they go hard inside. Good hold by Wassel, and it'll be a 2-2 count. That was a good take there. That was a close pitch. And this one in the dirt inside, swung through by Wassel. And just like that, we have a 1-2-3 inning, and we're already done with the first here in Minneapolis. So we'll take another short break here on Radio K Sports. Continue to enjoy the music from Radio K, in which obviously Radio K Sports operates underneath. And so we will be back right after this. Trick your plans getting all home. You've got a pocket full of gold. This trick your plans getting all home. Too young to be lazy, don't tell me you're a maybe. And I know you and you know me. It's getting deeper in this big sea. The old lady tells me it's hard. And my time. So hard, and you've got your game, and I've got mine. Shouldn't really take much time. You've got your game, and I've got mine. Shouldn't really take much time. Half know how to play it, and half know how to say it without losing everything we've got. It may be. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Radio K Sports, live from U.S. Bank Stadium, ready to bring you the second inning here between the Minnesota Golden Gophers and the Indiana Hoosiers. The first pitch of the inning is hit sharply to third, but will be foul. So Minnesota will start with an 
and one count against the number six batter, number 28, Murison. And we just had the lights go out in our box here. Yeah, a little uh, quick power outage, no big deal. That's all right, we're still broadcasting and we're still ready to go as we get another strike across the plate. So it's gonna be an 0-2 count. Minnesota straight up, hugging the lines a little bit at the corners. Pitch number three on the way and a bad swing, but a great pitch. Gets into the dirt. But Stanky will pull it out and throw it down to first. So Minnesota's gonna get a quick out here in the second inning. I believe all outs have been recorded via the strikeout. So four outs recorded by Ireland, four Ks. Standing in the box now is number four, Jesse of Indiana. He'll watch number strike number one down the middle. Minnesota pulls in third baseman Wassel. He's about even with the bag. He'll back up a few steps now. Pitch number two on the way. A choppy ground ball to second. Scooped up beautifully. Nice throw and an easy second out for Minnesota. Nice start here. Good to get two quick outs, not um, putting up the pitch count very high, which is good to see. Something we saw last season, even though it was abbreviated, a lot of airs from Minnesota. Yeah. Some sloppy defensive play from these Gophers that led to a lot of runs in the few games we got to do. And it's nice to see, you know, like you said, we've had a lot of strikeouts so far, but the few balls that have been in play have been dealt with nicely. First pitch here is a ball high and inside to the number eight man, Southern, the senior righty. Second pitch on its way, and it will be called a strike. So one and one count as Minnesota trails Indiana 1-0 in the second. Pulling the string on that one. And Ireland is going to get a 1-2 count as Southern swung through that one hard. Yeah, he did. I think he was sitting for something else there. Wasn't ready for the, the change. Minnesota with a deep infield. All the way back on the uh, theoretical dirt. As you were mentioning, Connor, at the break, no dirt at all. Nope. At U.S. Bank Stadium. You have the brown artificial turf around home and the mound, but other than that, it is all straight grass. Hard ground ball to third. Diving stop by Wassel, and he's not gonna be able to get up in time. Nice job getting to that ball, but stumbles a bit getting up, and he won't get a throw off. So it'll be an infield single for Southern, and it'll keep the inning alive for the Hoosiers. That was a really nice effort there by Wassel. Just, as you said, couldn't come up with the play there, and it would have been tough because Southern was really busting down the line. So number four, Sweeney, the first baseman, will hold Southern on. Infielders pinched in the middle. Third baseman, Wassel, comes up about even with the bag. First pitch to number one, Houston, will be low and ball number one. It'll be interesting to see how Minnesota will play the run game, seeing if Indiana will use some small ball tactics to their advantage. Minnesota has pulled the outfield in just a little bit. Left fielder Will Height is about where he's been all game. But center field and right have both come in, Bertrand and Kelly. 1-1 one, one count to the number nine batter of Indiana. This ball is outside, ball number two. Pretty tight lead over there at first for Southern. Yeah, he's not looking all too aggressive, so maybe my point is wrong. Ireland lead, leans in, excuse me. And that one will be across for a strike. So 2-2 two, two count, two outs here in the top of the second. Minnesota down 1-0 at home to the Indiana Hoosiers. On deck is the number one batter, Ashley for Indiana. And this pitch is swung on and missed. A quick strike three, and Minnesota gets itself out of the inning with no runs and just one hit. So after one and a half, the scoreboard reads one, 
to zero in favor of Indiana. We'll be back right after this on Radio K Sports. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Radio K Sports live from U.S. Bank Stadium. My name is Trask Angel alongside Connor Mockney. Excited to bring you Gopher Baseball as we started the 2020 season, Connor, as mm -hmm. pitch number one's across for a strike to number 44, Ireland. We started the 2020 season. This ball is then swung on and fouled up into the seats. And it's going to hit the concrete. And no one's on and it. And nobody's on it. I don't even know if anyone could go get that if they wanted to. Oh, wait, she's on it. Uh-oh. She's going to make the 30-row uh, trek to go get it. This pitch is on the outside corner. It's going to be flied to center. Just kidding. That one really died. And yeah. that's to a deep second base. So reined in by totes number five. And it'll be a quick first out for the Gophers. Connor, I didn't even know... There were people all the way down over there. I near, didn't either. Kind of near the bullpen of Indiana past the uh, shipping container dugout. Which, I will say, those shipping container dugouts, quite a sight. Yeah, you, you know, you thought maybe they could have built in something into this nice new stadium, but maybe not. First pitch to the number two batter for Minnesota. Is, this one will be flied out to center. Hit pretty good but chased down nicely by Richardson. So Jay Kelly is gone on one pitch, and next up will be number 16, Bertrand, the senior for Minnesota. Yeah, not a, like we said last inning, not a good start. Uh, you know, swinging early in the count, but not making much contact here, or at least good contact either. See if they can change that with Bertrand as he'll step in on the right side of the plate. Two alts already for the Gophers. This one's gonna be fouled straight up and come back into the stands. And again, no one to get it, but we have a couple eager fans in the front row gonna chase that one down. I really want one to come into the booth, not gonna lie. We're in a perfect spot for it too. Yeah, directly behind home plate. Pitch number two on the way. Change up and swung through by Bertrand, so it's going to be an 0-2 count with two outs here in the second. But, yeah, we are directly behind the plate. We have a nice big open window. Easy enough to shut the laptop. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you got good hands. You played baseball. You can yeah. catch it. I'll just dive behind the counter. <laughs> I'll save. I'll <laughs> save the day. Pitch number three on the way, and that one's going to be swung on miss to high fastball. And just like that, Minnesota is done with the second inning. Still no hits for the Gophers as they go one, two, three. After two, the scoreboard reads 1-0 in favor of Indiana. We'll be back on Radio K Sports right after this.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Radio K Sports and the Golden Gophers ready for inning number three. As Minnesota is down one to zero to the Indiana Hoosiers. Connor, not a lot of offense so far from these Gophers. No, not at all. Still haven't had a base runner, and that's going to be a problem as soon as this, you know, as this game continues to roll on. First pitch from Ireland is a strike. Hitting for Indiana is number three, Ashley. Ashley striking out on his first plate appearance. And that pitch is going to be good for a strike, low and away. So quick 0-2 count for Sam Ireland of Minnesota. Let's see if he uh, tries to attack here. No playing around. His 38th pitch on the way is going to be outside. So one two count to the leadoff man for Indiana. Indiana in the all gray today. The red helmet slash hat. Ireland's pitch on the way outside. It's going to be slashed out to center, but chased down nicely by Bertrand, number 16. And it'll be out number one for the Gophers in the third inning. Good start there. Good start there. Yeah, not a strikeout, but letting them get the ball in play, and they're not. It wasn't hit that hard. No, not at all. Easy play in center field. You know, we've really only seen two hard hit balls, both in the first inning, back to back. First pitch from Ireland to Richardson is a strike on the outside corner. The only two balls we really saw that were hard hit were those back-to-back -back doubles in the first. Yeah, that's been it for either side. Second pitch from Ireland is on the way and inside. So it'll be a 1-1 count. Now that one must have been low because that one was definitely across that inside corner. Oh, yeah, that one looked good. Pitch number three of the at-bat is going to be high and outside. So Ireland, you know, only two and a third in has already got 41 pitches racked up. How far into this game does Coach Anderson let him go? I think if he starts letting a bunch of runners on base, uh, then it's going to start being time to go to the bullpen. So as long as he you know, has good command still and he's not getting lit up, then I think he'll be okay. Last pitch fouled off into the stands behind the third base dugout. And this ball is going to be outside, so we have our first full count of the game. Three balls, two strikes, and one out in the top of the third. Pitch from Ireland is outside, and it'll be the first walk of the game for either side. And Richardson, the number two batter, will jog on down to first. Yeah, those last two pitches were not close, so hopefully Ireland can regain the zone here. Number two bar up for the Hoosiers. Last time up, doubled down that right field line, just talking about that hit. And he set up what would be the first run and only run of the game. This ball way inside. Barr jumps back to avoid getting hit. One ball, no strike. Let's see if Ireland tries to attack him differently than he did last, last at bat when he got burned. Second pitch, off speed, outside will be strike number one. Pretty tight lead over at first base for Richardson. They haven't had very many base runners, but when they have, has not been uh, very aggressive, and now he's getting himself off the base a little bit more. Maybe trying to draw over a throw. And look at that. Must well, have been listening to Connor. What can I say? Sharp throw over to first. He's back easily. As Ireland takes a long look at first. Settles in and throws. This ball's outside and muffed a little bit by Stanky, but he'll recover it, and Richardson will say it first. Minnesota on that third base side. And we have, we were talking about, you know, maybe needing to go to the bullpen. U.S. Bank Stadium has bullpens out on the field like a good old-fashioned baseball stadium. Yes, they do. I'm not the biggest fan of the on-field bullpens, but hey, they'll work. We've got plenty of space here. I love the temporary uh, netting that they've put up to protect the catchers. Yeah. I don't know if those are, are those stopping? The ones for Indiana look a whole lot smaller than the Gophers. Oh, yeah. Those 
those don't look like they're going to be stopping very much. Couple throws over to first base. And not really close as Richardson's still there. 2-1 count. Hard throw from Stanky after the pitch, and he'll be safe. So definitely keeping an eye on Richardson over there at first. 2-2 two -two count with one out. Minnesota still trails by one. Yeah, that was a nice heads-up play there. Uh, you saw Richardson over at first uh, stutter on his way, like potentially going to second base. Stanky saw it and tried to back pick over at first. Almost got him. Another throw over. Sweeney doesn't even put the tag down this time. Here's a pitch to the plate. Hit hard to center. Bertrand hesitated briefly. It's going to end up being chased down by number two, Robbie, the second baseman. That was a nice play. And, you know, Richardson's going to stay at first. I'm a little concerned. Bertrand is initially took a step backwards. Yeah. And which cost him not being able to get to the ball, but thankfully Robbie's able to run that one down in shallow center. Yeah, that, that was a tough play for the second baseman to make over the shoulder there coming in. So two outs here in the top of the third as Minnesota looking for another scoreless inning. They've had base runners on in all three innings. First pitch is swung through and missed, so it'd be strike one. Ireland takes a long look at first. He'll set and throw over again. Sweeney will not tag. Richardson didn't even have to slide that time. No, he was in safely there. Plenty of time. Last time up for Fucci, he doubled and got the RBI. Pushing across the only run of the game. This ball is low and inside. And will be ball number one. One and one count with two outs here in the top of the third. That was a close pitch too. Ireland spending a lot of time between pitches. Looking over to first. This one down the middle. Hit hard to left center. This ball is back. This ball is way gone. Up over the big tall wall and right up over the yellow line, up over the U.S. Bank Stadium sign. That was a moonshot. That was a hard hit ball. And the big man, Fucci, is having himself a day, a double, a home run, and he's got himself three RBIs. Yeah. He's uh, started off hot. Also doesn't help when you put the ball down the middle. No, it does not. I mean, I could have hit that one out. Maybe not as far. <laughs> but, yeah, that was a perfect pitch right there to have some home run practice. So Minnesota's going to be down 3-0. This pitch is laced into the right center gap. And it's going to be number five, Totes, who's going to dig hard for second. And an errant throw from right is going to soar over the second baseman's head. And he'll get in with a double. So we got back-to-back -back hits here. And still two outs. I w I'm curious to see if John Anderson might go out to talk to Ireland real quick, kind of settle him down after two hard-hit balls, back-to-back -back pitches. And it won't be John Anderson, but a member of the Minnesota coaching staff is on his way out. He's going to call in the infield. I believe it's Ty McDevitt, the pitching coach. Minnesota just starting to look like maybe they're getting into a rhythm. And then Indiana's able to rip off back-to-back -back hits as they did in the first. So five hits, three runs. And Minnesota, unfortunately, has had a non-existent offense up until this point. Yeah, not the start. I mean, it, it seems to be you know, happening every inning where we will uh, see two quick outs, and then all of a sudden you're going to see you know hit, hit, and it'll just kind of fall apart trying to get that third out of the inning. So with two outs, Gophers will break the, the huddle excuse me, at the mound. And number 28, Murson, will step in for the Hoosiers. Freshman batting sixth. Struck out last time up in the second. And the first pitch is going to be low and inside ball number one. 
Minnesota back to their base defense. Outfield playing relatively deep. Middle infielders at the edge of the grass. And this ball is ripped hard to left field. This is going to be foul. And that one was probably, what do, you, what do you think, Connor? 30 feet short of the wall? Oh, yeah. It was close. It was definitely close. That ball left high and inside. And the freshman did not miss it. Just a little, little too early on that one. Yeah, he was a little excited, a little jumpy. But he's been hitting well so far this year. In their previous game, he went two for four with a triple and a ribby. So I'd say he had a pretty good start to his uh, college career. Yeah, hard to argue with a 400 batting average. This one's going to be inside, and he's going to get under it. It's going to be up and into the glove of Stahl, the shortstop. He'll field it right behind second base. And Minnesota gets out of the third, but not before Indiana scores two more. Scoreboard reads 3-0 in favor of the Hoosiers. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're about ready to start the bottom half of the third inning. The Golden Gophers, unfortunately, trailing 3-0 to, to Indiana. And we want to thank everyone who's tuned in up until this point. And we want to encourage everybody who is listening to go ahead and follow the YouTube page because... Uh, you know, then you get updates every time we go live, regardless of what sport it is. And we got three more games this weekend. First pitch to number six, Stanky, is outside ball one. But, you know, Connor and I will be here tomorrow. And yes, then we will. we will have two more on Sunday with Jason Rutman, who, if you listen to the podcast ever, uh, calls in quite often. Very passionate speaker, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, he's always got his stuff ready to go. We usually got to rein him in a little bit. He's all, He's got too much to say. Oh, yeah. Second pitch to Stanky is high and outside, so it's going to be 2-0 count. Perfect opportunity here for the Gophers to get something started. Ooh. And he just missed a high fastball. That one fouled up and back to the back of that first row, or excuse me, first section. So it'll be a 2-1 count. Tommy Summer with only 16 pitches through two and a half. Pretty efficient so far. Summer leans in and throws another fastball that is fouled straight back into the net this time. So it's gonna be two, two count. And Minnesota still looking for that first base runner as it's been a tough start offensively for them in this one. Yeah, hopefully we can get something going here at the bottom of the lineup so we can turn it back up to the top. On deck is the first baseman, Sweeney. Here is the pitch, and it's going to be outside and low. So Stanky will force it to a full count. No outs here in the bottom of the third at U.S. Bank Stadium. Indiana shifted slightly to the right side. A lot of space between the third baseman and the line. Left field also playing to the right. And this pitch is not close, high and away. 
And Minnesota will get its first walk of the day and its first base runner of the day. That's a good sight to see. He stayed patient, wasn't chasing, even though his team is behind. And he had a nice good at bat to lead off this inning. So Stanky will be at first. Sweeney, the number eight hitter, will be in the box on that left side. Love the walk-up song. Yeah, very good walk-up song. Fat Bottom Girls playing for Sweeney as he steps in. Taking his sweet old time, too. He's taking his sweet time. He's got his foot on that back line of the batter's box. Standing almost straight up. He's going to look to bunt, and he bunts foul. Right idea, though, as third base, number two bar was playing way back and also off the line. Yeah. He's playing almost, you know, halfway between where the shortstop and third baseman would usually play. And he is not he is not coming in at all. No. He's still behind the bag. In that same spot. He's a good fifteen feet off the line. Twenty maybe even. Yeah. O one count to Sweeney. Swinging on this one. And it's outside. He'll swing through, so O two count. It was the right idea to try to bunt there because you haven't been able to hit summer so far. So you might as well try to generate any way you can. Summers leans in. And he'll throw to first. But Stanky's back in plenty of time. Also had a very short lead there, so he didn't have too far to go. Summers a lefty. Trying to fool Stanky over at first. Stanky still with a relatively conservative lead. The pitch is swung through and missed. Looks like he got a piece of it, but the catcher Southern will hold on for the first out of the inning for the Gophers. So still one guy on, but one out. And we're down to our last batter. First, the only guy we haven't seen yet in this game hit. Number 10, Stahl, right-handed sophomore for the Gophers. He'll lean in and await the 26th pitch from Summers. Contact off the end of the bat. He'll hit it up and into the seats. Quick strike for Summers. Still looks like nobody's going after it. Oh, no, it's the same guy who went and got it last time. He's going to get his workout in today. He's he's down in the second row, and he has climbed up. This is the second or third ball he's gotten. Pitch from Summers is high, and it'll be ball one, one on one count to the number nine hitter for the Gophers. Indiana still shifted to the right side. Left field playing well off the line. Center more of a... Right center shade. And third baseman Barr is still about 20 feet off the line. This pitch is high and in. Oh, no. Ooh. Right at the letters on the inside corner. So it's going to be strike number two. So one, two count to stall with one out in the bottom of the third. Very generous call there. Looked a little inside. You see, you thought it was inside. I thought it was high. This one is going to be grounded to the shortstop. Houston flipped over to second and tossed down to first. And so a double play will kill the inning. And the Gophers still with no hits and no runs. We'll be back right after this on Radio K Sports. Curiosity can't be beat. I said, hey, hey, wrong does not know. See, you were always good at bringing back the memories. Come on, talk is fine. No, one and done. We 
without a chance that I could fall. You got me sending out an SMS. Smooth sensations at your call. Because it's you who knows me best. Oh, yes. And it's hard to get off. Hello, and welcome back to the game here. Indiana up three over the Gophers. We will see. Sam Ireland still out on the mound. And we have the seven hitter Jesse starting this inning for Indiana. First pitch cross for Ireland. It's gonna be called outside ball number one. Good news, inning break. Connor and I got the lights back on. So temporary power outage or <laughs> Motion outage, I would say. Yeah, we might have to get up and jump around during this inning again to turn them back on. Pitch number two is across the inside corner for a strike. Ireland speeding up the pace a little bit here. Gets that third pitch in. Unfortunately, it's low and inside. This would be ball number two. Definitely picking up, like you said, picking up the pace from last inning. There's a shot. Watch your lips in the stands there. Got a couple people searching around for it. Ireland winds up, and this one on the outside corner is going to be pulled to second base. Nice play there by number two, Robbie. Goes with the backhand and fires it over to Sweeney to get the first out of the inning. So we've got the first out. We've gotten the first out last three innings. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, what do they do here to get themselves through this inning without getting up any base runners? I think what's really important here is you got to not, fo uh, you got to focus more on making sure that you pound the zone and being ready, knowing where to go with the ball, because we have seen some throwing errors so far today. So just making sure that you're, Concise on your fundamentals and you know where to go. Southern had the single in the first or second inning, excuse me. He's going to foul the first pitch up into the stands behind the Indiana dugout on that first baseline. Second pitch from Ireland is outside for a ball. Minnesota has adjusted the defense accordingly. Remember Wassel diving to his left to try to rein in the ball last time. Third pitch of the at-bat is low and will be ball number two. So 2-1 two, count with one out here in the top of the fourth. Indiana leads 3-0 over the Golden Gophers. This one down the middle and ripped hard down the line. It's going to be foul and fielded real cleanly by someone in the bullpen for the Gophers. Is that one of the catchers? Looks like it. Looks like he's got his pads on. Catchers are athletes too. No, Spread the word. <laughs> no fear over there. Took a weird hop off the mound, too. Soaked it up. Pitch from Ireland is going to be popped up near the dugout. It's going to keep going, and it's going to end up just behind the shipping container on the right first baseline. So we'll have a 2-2 count with one out. you got to believe Ireland's coming with some gas here as... Southern has been behind on most of his pitches. Yeah, don't change if he can't catch up to it. Southern, a lot of movement in the batter's box before that pitch. And with the pitch, we have a ball that's low and outside, so it's going to be a 3-2 full count. Minnesota is still hugging that third base line, and that one's way inside. And hits Southern right in the middle of the back. And he'll jog down to first. And just like that, Minnesota has another base runner on and another threat to score. Yeah, and that wasn't the worst place to get hit either. That was probably one of the places you wanted. Yeah, it looked like in that meaty part of the back. Mm -hmm. Left of the spine, not on the ribs. Doing him a favor. Number nine batter up for Indiana Houston. Last time up, struck out. Generous lead for Southern at first. Looks like Houston was going to bunt. 
Lassell was charging hard from third. I believe this is the second time that Houston squared around a bunt uh, in this in this game so far on the first pitch. So something you do have to be aware of in his scouting report. Pitch from Ireland is hit hard to the left center gap. And over and under is waiting. It's Bertrand. He will gather it about, you say that's about the 30-yard line typically when the Vikings play here? Yeah, that's about the 30. You can actually still kind of see the numbers in some spots here too. Got two outs for the Gophers, runner on first for the Hoosiers. And this is where they've done most of their damage tonight is with two outs. So the Gophers will need to be careful. And with this part of the lineup too as they roll up back to the top. Ashley so far tonight 0 for 2 with a strikeout and fly out to center. First pitch is going to be outside and low. Nice stop there by Stanky sliding down on his knees. Minnesota back to a base defense. Sweeney holding the runner on at first. In the stretches, Ireland. He's going to throw, and that one's lined over the head of Robbie at second into the gap, and they're going to hold up the runner at third. So a two-out single will put runners at first and third, and that one just over the top of Robbie's glove. Couldn't quite jump high enough to get that one. Yeah, just missed it, just out of his reach. Tough break for the Gophers. Sam Ireland now with 75 pitches. Got to believe that this might be his last inning. I'd be surprised to see him get sent out for inning number five. I would agree, and there's still no one up in the Gopher bullpen either, so we'll see if he, you know, if he keeps giving up hits here or runners, then that's, you know, maybe there's a change. Richardson in to hit for the Hoosiers. That first pitch is across for a strike. Richardson with a strikeout and walk so far in the game. Indiana with runners on the corners. Tight lead at both first and third. Ireland looks at first, now delivers. Inside, ball one. Minnesota looking to escape the fourth with no runs. Indiana looking to add on to this lead, 3-0 here in the top of the fourth. This ball inside and low, another nice sliding save by Stanky. Count is now going to be 2-1 and one at U.S. Bank Stadium. Gopher, Gophers opening up their season at home with a four-game series. This one's going to be ripped to Robbie at second. He'll field it cleanly and toss it over to Sweeney at first. So the Gophers will escape the damage, and they'll get out of the fourth with no runs. So midway through the fourth, scoreboard still reads 3-0 in favor of the Hoosiers. Get on the piss bop slit side. Sit and meditate, get into the flow of my breath and get my thoughts in control. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That was In Good Health, another great song provided by Radio K for us here during 
not only our baseball broadcast, but also basketball, volleyball, football, mm -hmm. softball in about a month. Yeah, when they return back to Minnesota. So we're at the bottom of the fourth now. Minnesota, no runs, no hits. Only one base runner from a walk. First pitch is in to Will Height for a strike as Tommy Summer is cruising right now. 29 pitches, three strikeouts, and just the one walk. Second pitch is across, and Will Height didn't even flinch at that one as it comes across for strike number two, 0 2 count. Back to what I was saying is, you know, we are doing spring sports now until about May, so you might as well go like and subscribe the Radio K770 page as this ball comes in high for ball number one. Go like and subscribe that page, then you'll get notified every time we go live. We're even just for this weekend because we got three more games coming up. Connor doing the game with me tomorrow, and then I'll be with Jason Rutman for the two on Sunday. Pitch number four on its way. It's going to be on the outside corner. Ooh. And Will Height will be called out on strikes. He didn't think that was a strike. I don't know if that was a strike. I don't either, but it was too close to take. Too close, to correct. With two strikes, you already had watched two other pitches. You got to at least try to fight that one off. But instead, the Gophers will have one out in the bottom of the fourth and still no runs. That is the classic coach response, too. Well, you should have swung at one of the other two if you were upset about that one. Minnesota looking for their first hit of the game. Robbie, the second baseman, will stand in straight up, tight on the plate, and he'll have to scoot back to avoid that pitch, so he'll start 2-0. As Minnesota does have someone up and moving in the bullpen, but uh, we're, so, we're so high up here at U.S. Bank, I can't even tell what number that is. No, neither can I. It looks like 20-something. Robbie got a piece of that one, but fouls it straight back into the net. So that would be strike number one, two, one count. Indiana has a little bit of a shift going on in the infield. Third base up near even with the bags. Middle infield is back along the back edge of the grass. This one is in high. Good eye by Robbie. So a three, one count. Most favorable count we've been in all day. Best spot we've been in all day to uh, potentially get a ball in play. Yeah, this is a good count to be sitting fastball and looking to drive something into the gap. So hopefully our All-American from 2020 will be able to do that for us. Robbie will call time. Tap his cleats and step back in as the fake crowd is getting excited for the pitch. Inside, so another walk. The real crowd was happy about that one, too. And the best start to an inning that the Gophers have had so far today. Tommy Summer has looked really, really good through three and a third. He's still under 40 pitches on the day. Gophers 0 for 9 on the day hitting. And 0 for 2 with runners in on, not even in scoring position, just, just on, on base. base. We haven't had anybody in scoring position yet. Wassel, the third baseman, will be up. Hitting lefty and watching pitch number one low. So we see consecutive balls from Summer, who has been relatively accurate so far today. Yeah, hopefully this means he starts losing a little bit of his control so we can uh, leave something out over the plate. Big lead for Robbie at first, jumping around, bouncing around. Trying to draw a throw, he won't. The pitch is on its way though. And that's gonna be ball number two and it's gonna be Summer's third ball in a row. This is a good spot too for Wassel. Look for a fastball cause he's not gonna wanna go to three and oh. Robbie a little shorter lead at first. He's gonna spend a long time looking and the throw over and it's gonna be thrown away. Robbie's going to get to second. He's going to head on his way to third as the first baseman's. Oh, uh, it's ruled out of play? I think so. There's a – I can't – I really never even noticed it. There's a small little sliver down behind the bullpen yep. that you can't really see because of the wall. And I guess that's – once it goes out of play, you got to stop. 
Robbie was well on his way to third, but the first baseman, Fucci of Indiana, alertly uh, noticed the ball went into that out of play zone. Put his hands up. And put his hands up. So Minnesota will have a runner on second. We were just talking about runners in scoring position. Our first of the night. And another ball in the dirt for Summer. That's his fourth in a row. And I think we should probably just take Lassell's bat for this next pitch because they're not in a million years should he be swinging. No, no, he should not. This is the perfect spot to just take. Summer stares down Robbie at second. Oh, my gosh, and he swung. So he swings through what I would think would have been ball four, maybe. It looked to be pretty high. So a 3-1 count, and Wassel's going to have to step back in. Wassel sets up on that far back side of the box. I think his foot is actually on that line. It is. He's pretty far back there. He's got that open stance. Steps in, and here's the pitch. At his hands, he fouls it off into the netting. And now he's got a full count, and Tommy Summer looks like he might be locked back in. Yeah. I mean, when you start 3-0 and the count's in your favor, and you're now you're at a full count, as a pitcher, you feel like once you work it back to that, you can go to pretty much anything you want. I still I am, I am baffled by that, that swing on 3-0. Especially when you haven't had many base runners. I mean, it's just not a good, good time to swing. Here's the pitch from Summer. This ball's hit hard to center. Going to send him back towards the gap, catching it at the wall. Robbie's going to tag up. Throw is not going to be in time. And a nice piece of hitting there by Wassley. He put that ball on a rope all the way out to that 370 mark in left center. And in that spot, too, there's, it's right at that triangle where it, the wall juts out. So if he had put it maybe like five feet to the right, maybe it's gone. He would have definitely made Richardson, the center fielder, fight for the wall. Oh, yeah. And try to grab that ball. But the Gophers have a runner on third with two outs, so it's going to be up to Ireland, the pitcher, see if he can help himself out here as this ball is high. Robbie, an aggressive base runner. He was almost halfway down that line looking, <laughs> looking. He had to get the stop sign from, from Ireland, send him back to third. But a 1-0 count again. Summer starts from behind. And Ireland swings at this pitch. He's going to be ahead of it. He'll foul it off. So 1-1 one, one count in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, Robbie definitely aggressive on the base paths here. Trying to get every foot that he possibly could. Pitch on its way, and it'll get the outside corner. So it's going to be 1-2 to Ireland. Minnesota was still only one guy warming up in the bullpen, but got to believe that this is Ireland's last time out on the field for the day. This pitch is going to be low. Ireland jumping back. Don't know how inside it was. 2-2 two -two count with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Minnesota trails Indiana 0-3. This one... Oh, wow. Oh, my. That one looked a little inside, but it's called for strike three. Ireland doesn't get a swing off, and the Gophers won't push Robbie across, so we will end the fourth inning with a scoreboard that reads 0-3 to three in favor of the Hoosiers. For Radio K Sports, uh, I'm Trask Angel alongside Connor Mockney, and we'll be back right after this.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Radio K Sports, live on YouTube. Excited to be actually at the game. We've been doing basketball and we've been doing football this fall, but we are finally back at at U.S. Bank Stadium watching the game live, not on a monitor. And it's great, Connor. It, it, it's awesome. It's also nice to not be freezing like at uh, football games, that's for sure. Yeah, with COVID this year, we had to move outside of our nice comfy booth and uh, a little crispy this fall. <laughs> Just a little? Doing games. 1-1 one, one count to the number three batter bar for Indiana. This one's going to be fouled up the line, barely reached the bullpen area for the Gophers. And number 44, Sam Ireland, still in the game. I am, I'm quite surprised. I am too. His pitch count uh, was at 79 coming into this inning. And he's facing the heart of the order, which has really hit him hard so far in this game. So John Anderson showing some confidence in Ireland right now. Yeah, Barr with the double in the first inning. That set up the first run for the Hoosiers. He falls back this last pitch, and he's going to rip this one into the left center gap. The speedy Bertrand will run it down, but not in time. Heads up, Blue. As it's another double for Barr. And like you said, uh, Robbie almost ran the umpire over getting that ball. Yeah, the umpire wasn't looking. He wasn't too aware there. And he just kept running into the play. And that throw actually almost hit him too. So the Gophers will start this fifth inning with no outs and a Hoosier on second. Already down 3-0. And the first pitch is a strike. A fastball at about the chest. Connor, so I'm noticing that there's an air on the board for Indiana. What could that have been When from? did that happen? Uh, I feel like we've been paying attention. Yeah. I mean, they also haven't had to make many plays in the field, so I'm not sure where that's from. Oh, the throwing air on the pickoff. Oh, yep. That's what it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. There it is. Uh, second pitch from Ireland is at the chest. Check swing by Fucci. Third base umpire is going to call it a strike. So 0-2 count to Fucci, who's got a double and a home run today. He's got all three RBIs. And Fucci calls time just as Ireland's about to throw. Minnesota outfield straight up. Not playing any deeper than they typically have been throughout the game. Robbie pretty deep at second. And Fucci swings through the outside pitch. And it'll be the first out of the inning and the first time Ireland has been able to retire Fucci in this game. Yeah, it's good to keep him off base, not letting him put one over the seats. Hit just a bomb his last time up to right center. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Up to bat now for the Hoosiers is Totes. He will check his swing but not go at the low outside pitch, so it's going to be ball number one. Robbie in a little bit closer now, checking in on Barr at second. Minnesota playing pretty close to the line on both third and first base side. Pitch from Ireland's inside. This is going to be 2-0 count to the number five batter who's already won for two today, hitting 400 on the season. Like we said, he's off to a real good start. Indiana playing one game before today as this pitch is fouled back into the net, a high fastball. The count's going to be two and one. Two totes with one out here in the top of the fifth. Indiana playing one game, losing that one game before coming here. They'll play tonight and on Sunday. Minnesota will fit in a game between those two against Rutgers and then against Rutgers again after that Indiana game on Sunday. Curveball doesn't quite clip that inside corner, so it's going to be a 3-1 count. As Minnesota pretty stagnant in the field. Robbie with a little bit of movement, checking that runner at second, but Barr not moving very much. 
And this one high and inside. That ball got away from Ireland a bit. So one out, you got two runners on. Your pitch counts at 86. 91. Excuse me, 91. Is, uh, is it time for him to come out? I would say so. I would say after that last at bat, don't give him anyone. Don't give him any more hitters. And it looks like they're going to do just that. So the infield will converge. And we're going to have a pitching change here in Minnesota. So it's about 8.15. About four, four and a half innings in. What time does this game start? Seven? We seven start a little after seven? Yeah, a little after. All right, we're moving along pretty good. Have, you know, when you don't do a lot offensively, the mm -hmm. game moves a little bit faster. Yeah, that is true. Uh, while we wait for Minnesota to change pitchers, we mentioned uh, the Sports Hour podcast weekly on Tuesdays. Radio K Sports not only does live radio play-by-play -play for Gopher Sports, but also puts out a weekly podcast hosted by myself and Grant Sandberg. Connor is a frequent guest on the show, talking anywhere. I mean, we talk MLB, we talk college baseball, college basketball, football, NFL. Hockey. I mean, yeah, Have we? is there something we haven't talked about on the show when you've been a guest? I don't think so. <laughs> you I mean, maybe a little host, bit of volleyball, but that's about it. You've hosted a bunch of episodes with me mm -hmm. last spring. Um, you know, so we put it out. It's an hour long on Tuesdays. If you can't catch it on air, uh, it's available Spotify or uh, Apple Podcasts. I think Google Podcasts. I don't know where else you get yeah, podcasts on. But anywhere you can find them, it'll be there. Yep. The Sports Hour on Radio K. It's quick. It's concise. We cover all the gopher sports, and then we hit usually some relevant major you know, professional sport news if we have time. Uh, you know, and we just, I'm just so excited to be back doing baseball. Like Same here. You and I had just gotten, it, was it two games or just the one, or three I believe, games? I believe I only did one game, but you might have done a couple more. <laughs> I can't remember now, but it was right when all the COVID stuff happened and we had just, uh, we had just gotten ourselves ready and organized to do baseball and Grant Sandberg, who does a lot of the broadcast was gone and so... Uh, it's it's good to be back. It's good to be actually at the stadium watching it. And, you know, even better than this, too, is when we go to Siebert Field and watch yep. there because that's such a cool cool stadium. Or I don't know if you call it a stadium. It's a it's venue. A, it's a venue. Yeah, it's not, not quite like this. But uh, no. either way, Minnesota is ready to go one out, two runners on. And it's going to be number 27, Nolan Burchill, who is going to be on the mound for the Gophers here midway through the fifth. The tall right-handed uh, redshirt senior Burchill making his first appearance of the year. So we'll see how he does in a little bit of a jam. One out and two runners on here for Indiana. First pitch is up the middle. Ground ball to second, not in time to first. So the Gophers will get one, a hard hit ball up the middle off of Burchill's first pitch. Fielded cleanly by Stahl. He flips to Robbie and Sweeney will not get the ball in time. So the Gophers have two outs now, first and third. Exactly the same situation as we had last inning. See if Churchill can get us out, or excuse me, Burchill can get us out of this jam with the number six batter, Murison, stepping up to the plate. This one down the middle, line to center field. And Bertrand will retreat and field it cleanly. Two pitches, two outs. Pretty efficient, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> Pretty efficient for Burchill. We'll be back right after this. Indiana leads 3-0 over the Golden Gophers.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That was a nice fade. Thank you. I'm getting better at it. Yeah, as the game goes on. I said we need someone else in the booth here to be doing the uh, the tech stuff. Usually that's Grant's. Usually that's Grant's. What was that flying? Was that a ball? Yep, first pitch. I just missed the first pitch already. First pitch fouled back. Lucky I was here. <laughs> you, you're watching out. That's that's what I'm saying. We gotta have someone else doing doing the computer stuff. I'm mm -hmm. busy trying to change it to the bottom of the fifth, and you got balls flying all over the place. Yeah. Well, there's another one, same exact spot. So a quick 0-2 count to number 28, Jay Kelly, the senior. 0 for 1 on the day. Flight out to center field. Gopher still looking for that first hit. Still looking for a run. They've had a few base runners via the walk, but other than that, very quiet yeah, at the plate. This one room. skied high to the third baseman bar. He'll take a few steps back, and that'll be out number one for the Gophers. So three quick pitches and an out for Tommy Summer of Indiana. I got to imagine that was pretty tough to see looking into this uh, ceiling here. Definitely not the ceiling or a setting that you typically would play in. Yeah, in a completely different atmosphere because this is, I mean, this is really built to be a day stadium with all the light coming in through the windows. Yeah. And here's a bunt down the third baseline. Beautiful. Indiana's going to let it be, and it's going to stay fair. Stalled out about halfway down the line. And it stopped right on the line, too. That's They got it sloped for the home team uh -huh. there on the third base side. So it'll be our first hit and our first uh, base runner in a while. And it was number 16, Bertrand, the senior center fielder. Using his speed. Just a beautiful bunt. Oh, yeah. That's something coaches are going to be proud of. And, you know, bunting, I, in my opinion, I think bunting's harder to do on the turf. Oh, yeah. The turf is so much more bouncy, and the ball is so much more lively when it hits the turf. And Bertrand gets picked off of first. Similar to what Robbie was doing. He got a generous lead, jumping around a little bit, and he was mid kind of hop. And the lefty Summer tosses it over. Nice tag by Fucci, the first baseman. And the Gophers, just like that, have two outs in the bottom of the fifth. And that was a nice move there by Summer. That's the old 45-degree move where he strides halfway uh, towards, like leaning towards the plate, but then will step at 45 degrees between home plate and the rubber, or at the end of the mound and the rubber. And that was a nice, nice move there. Stanky will swing through the first pitch from Summer, starting with some off speed. So it'll be a 0 1 count as the Gophers have gotten a little quiet. But Stanky will rip one out to left center, barehanded Ooh. by the left fielder. And even though he reached out and grabbed, I mean, Jesse, holy cow, what a grab, barehanded in the gap. That was impressive. <laughs> Who needs a glove when you can just do that? Even though he bare hands it and gets it in, uh, Stanky quick enough to get to second. So, you know, unfortunately for the Gophers, if you don't get picked off a of first there, you're now on the board with a run. Yeah, or at, at the very worst, second and third one out. With a That's a pretty good situation to be in. First baseman Sweeney will step in. He has a runner on second with two outs. The Gophers recording. Their first and second hit of the game in this inning. This one on the inside corner called for strike one. Seen a lot of golfers watching strike number one come across the plate today. I understand if you're trying to drive up his pitch count, like you don't want to be swinging at the first pitch, especially if that's what you did early on in the game. Um, but, I mean, you do have to attack him at some point. Long look at second for Summer. And he'll toss another one across the plate. And Sweeney will watch that one, too. So 0-2 count with two outs, runner on second. Gophers looking for a run. They still trail 3-0 to the Indiana Hoosiers, which the Gophers historically have done very well against the Hoosiers. 
you know, 100 plus wins to less than 50 for the Hoosiers all time. Yeah. Sweeney will swing through the off speed and go down swinging. So the Gophers get a little bit going offensively, but unfortunately are unable to execute. And so after five, the scoreboard reads 3-0 in favor of Indiana. We'll be back right after this on Radio K Sports. You've got a pocket full of gold. This trick you're playing's getting all home. You've got a pocket full of gold. This trick you're playing's getting all home. Too young to be lazy. Don't tell me you're a maybe. And I know you and you know me. It's getting deeper in this. See, the old lady tells me it's hard and my time is short and you've got your game and I've got mine. Shouldn't really take much time. You've got your game and I've got mine. Shouldn't really take much time. Half not how to play it and half not how to say it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Trask Angel alongside Connor Mockney as we get ready for the top of the sixth inning here in Minneapolis. First pitch from Burchill is a ball. And, you know, we're so used to doing football and basketball where you have media timeouts that are Two and a half, three, four minutes. Mm -hmm. This one on the outside corner for a strike, one and one. And baseball, they don't waste time, even compared to the MLB. I mean, they don't waste any time between innings. We're on and off no. real quick. It's like 30, 45 seconds. This one down Ooh. the middle, ripped hard down the left field line. It's going to be foul. But a line drive into the stands just a little bit early for Southern, who has a single and was hit by a pitch earlier. Yeah, he, he had some uh, good wood on that one. So that was definitely a rip. If he straightens that out, that's trouble for the Gophers. Burchill, long leg kick. We'll throw this one into the opposite batter box. Stanky again down on his knees, sliding right to stop that one. So 2-2 two -two count with no outs here in the top of the six. Gophers looking to bottleneck this Hoosier offense. And that one looked like it came out of his hand funny as that bounced way out. Yeah. And yet again, though, another nice stop by Stanky. He's been pretty solid back there so far today. He's been stopping everything, no pass balls. So that's pretty good to see. Burchill pitching from the stretch with nobody on base. This one's going to be a bloop out to right center. Run down by Bertrand, and he quickly throws it in. That was an awkward looking slide there. The throw a little bit off, so it pulls the shortstop stall off the bag. And like you said, Connor, looks like he got caught up in the turf and kind of bounced in a little bit. Yeah, you hop right back up. I wouldn't want to be sliding on this, not a chance. He looks to be all right, jogging around. I'm sure his teammates will be making fun of him for that, though. That's, like, poster-worthy stuff right there. <laughs> I'm guessing he's hoping no one has that on video. Too late. Up to bat is the number nine hitter for Indiana Houston. Third baseman Wassel is up along the line. Nice bun along the first baseline. Fielded by Stanky and thrown over to Sweeney for the out. But... 
the runner will advance. So Southern will stand at third base with just one out. That was good execution there on that bunt. That's exactly what you want as a coach when you call that type of play. First pitch up the opposite baseline. And then just died right there. Indiana with eight hits and three runs in the top of the sixth inning. Their second game of the season. This pitch from Burchill on the outside corner is strike 0-1. Good job by Burchill attacking the zone there with the first pitch. Minnesota bullpen quiet. Indiana bullpen quiet. I assume we see Tommy Summer come out for a few more innings the way he's been pitching. This one is going to be punched into left field. And it'll be an RBI single for the number nine hitter, Houston. And unfortunately, you know, Wassel is playing up along the line near third base to try to keep that runner close. Mm -hmm. And that ball gets by him because he's not typically where he'd be, you know, where he's standing right now, you know, 15, 20 feet off. Yeah, that would have been a good spot. That He would have caught that on one hop. So the Gophers are unfortunately going to go down 4-0 on the ninth hit for the Hoosiers. But only one out, so they still have some work to do in this inning. Virtual in the stretch. He'll spin and fire to first. And no tag applied by Sweeney. And our apologies, that was Ashley, the leadoff hitter, uh, the at the top of the order, who is the one that drove in that latest run for Indiana. Oh, did I screw that up? All good. Well, that's why we got two of us, I guess, Connor. You got to keep me in line here. Yeah, exactly. This one flared out to left field. Under it is Will Height, who will jog in and toss it in. So the second out of the innings recorded. They keep the runner at first. And now we have up for Indiana number two, Barr, who's got two doubles on the day. Got to find a way to keep him off base here. Tight lead at first. Burchill fires home. And a nice pitch there. Strike number one. Gets out ahead of Barr. Indiana 9 for 25 hitting today. About a 360 average. That's pretty good. And they've been 6 for 11 with two outs. This one skied high. And this is going to be fielded by the shortstop stall in shallow left field. He'll rein it in, and the Gophers escape just giving up one run. So after five and a half, the scoreboard reads 4-0 in favor of Indiana. We'll be back right after this on Radio K Sports. Welcome back to Radio K Sports, live from U.S. Bank Stadium. I'm Trask Angel, alongside Connor Mockney, as we are ready to bring you the bottom half of this sixth inning. The Gophers still trailing 4-0 to zero to the Hoosiers. 
First pitch is low from Summer. So it'll be a 1 0 count to start. Stalls at bat. Last time up, he grounded into the double play that ended the inning. Second pitch is high from Summer. 2 0 count to Stall. And coming into this at bat, Summer was only at 59 pitches. So you got to find a way to get him out of the groove that he is currently in. Stahl's going to call time and step out of the box. That's one good way to do it. Indiana pinching their middle infielders just a bit. First and third well off the line. Here's the pitch on the outside corner. It's going to be strike number one, two, one to Stahl. That would have been a good pitch to swing at right there. Outfield is shifted right. Center field and right bunched up on that right half. Left field playing about in between center and left. This one's going to be outside corner again, this time fouled back into the seats. And I think that one might have been the closest to us. Yeah, that one was, that one's getting there. Maybe got to wish it back. Come up this way. That one's mm. fouled off again, too. Definitely pitching him to the outside as they uh, must know something about Stahl that we don't know. Yeah. They're pretty confident that he's not going to pull the ball here. Like you said, that third baseman is well off the line. This one missing inside and no. high. No, it didn't. I mean, maybe it's the angle, but, man, that one looked like it was up near his armpits. Yeah. And he was definitely uh, fighting that one, too. So unfortunately, it's a strikeout and an out for the Gophers in the bottom of the sixth. That was a tough call to have go against you right there, especially when you're down four. Leadoff man for Minnesota, Will Height. So far on the day, 0 for 2. As pitch number one is outside. He'll start 1-0. and oh. I'm surprised that one wasn't called too. You know, I mean, to be honest, I was kind of in the same spot, a little bit further off the plate, but seemed, seemed to like it was in a similar spot. Yeah, they were close. This one is hit sky high to left field. It's going to be real shallow, and it's going to end up the shortstop Houston who will come over and field it right along that lip. So two outs for Minnesota. In the bottom of the six, and with only two hits, they have no runs and still trail by four. I don't know what it is today. I don't know if Summer's stuff is just looking really, really good out there on the mound, or if it's a lack of preparation. Minnesota just has not been able to make good contact at all today. This was a Minnesota team that was 8-10 and 10 when the season got called off last year. This pitch is going to be flared down the right field line. In the gap, can't see. Foul, I believe. Still don't see a... There's the right fielder, Murison. Looks like from his body language, he, he, we got blocked out by the stands, mm -hmm. but from his body language, looked like he maybe had a chance on that ball. Yeah, because we didn't see it go into the stands because it's right there. So maybe he dropped it. Maybe he just didn't extend his arm out enough. He was over there a while. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was waiting. 0-1 count to the number two man, Robbie. And he'll hit this one down the right field line. This one is definitely foul, though. Landing near the bullpen on that right field line. So an 0-2 count with two outs. Robbie looks for his first hit of the day, 0 for 1 with a walk. Let's see if he can straighten one out here because the center fielder is shaded into the right center gap. So if he straightens one, straightens one out, he's got a lot of room in left center. The pitch from Summer misses way outside. So it'll be a 1-2 count. Like we were saying before, this Minnesota team last year, you know, 8-10 and 10 didn't look great. But a few bright spots, you know, for them, you know, including Max Meyer, who's no longer with them. This one is going to be a dribbler up to the pitcher. Summer will turn and fire, and Robbie is out at first base. Just barely. That'll be the third out of the inning. And uh, we'll resume our... Max Meyer talk. Our Max Meyer Gophers 2020 back. talk when we come back. We are through six innings here. The Gophers trail by four. We'll be back right after this.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Radio K Sports, Real Sports Radio. I'm Trask Angel alongside Connor Mockney, and we're at the top of the seventh. Gophers have two hits, no runs. Indiana, nine hits and four runs. They are looking to strike again, but Burchill, who came in to relieve, has looked really good since he came in. He has. He's been able to you know, be efficient with his pitches. He's only at, I believe, 16 now. Uh, so he's been pretty good coming out of the gate here. 0-2 count. And the third pitch of the at-bat is fouled off into the seats down that third base line. Number no. 21, Fu sorry, Connor, number no, 21, oh Fucci, at the plate. He's got a home run and a double on the day. Yeah, last at-bat, he also struck out too. So maybe getting the same result here, pretty nice. This one, ground ball up the first base line, fielded by Sweeney, and he'll run it himself. So a quick out to potentially the most dangerous hitter on this Indiana lineup. Yeah, he's been good today, as we've seen, and he is their senior leader hitting in the middle of that lineup. So he can really do some damage. Up next for the Hoosiers is number five, Totes. He's got a double and a walk on the day. First pitch from Burchill is a little too far inside, ball one. Connor, we had just started talking 2020 Gophers and little Max Meyer before we had to go to break. Uh, you, know, you know, what does that do to a team who you've got a guy like Max Meyer, this ball is ground ball to Robbie at second. He'll fire across quickly to Sweeney and two outs for the Gophers here in the top of the seventh. But, you know, you had a guy like Max Meyer last year who gets drafted you know, what does that do for your team chemistry? And, you know, you know Max Meyer, you know, he's off doing great things now in the minors. Yeah, I mean, that's a big spot, big shoes you definitely have to fill as a team because not only was he your best pitcher, but he was also a really darn good hitter. And he was hitting the middle of that lineup every day. And so to replace that type of presence, it's going to be difficult. And I don't think one guy can solely do that. Um, so it's definitely going to take a team effort to get back of what you just lost. Murison batting for the Hoosiers. First pitch from Burchill. Got the outside corner for the first strike. Pitch number two on its way and fouled back into the stands along that first base line. And as you were saying, going back to the uh, 2020 Gopher talk, um, Max Meyer he was drafted third overall to the Miami Marlins, and that ties him with Paul Molitor, who was drafted in uh, 1977 as the highest ever Gopher player drafted at any position. So pretty darn good. Yeah, things worked out pretty well for Paul Molitor, So. Oh, yeah, he had a not a bad career. <laughs> uh, with that, Birchall strikes out Morrison swinging and the cleanest, fastest, best inning for the Gophers defensively so far in this game. So halfway through the seventh, the scoreboard reads 4-0 in favor of Indiana. We'll be back right after this on Radio K. Two in our hearts, in two edge 
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the bottom of the seventh inning. I'm Trask Angel alongside Connor Mockney. And the first pitch to number 30, Wassel, the third baseman, is swung on and missed for the first strike. We were talking on the break. We need to uh, get the seventh inning stretch song loaded in for the listeners to play uh, halfway through the seventh. We got to stand. We got to make sure our listeners are standing too. Yeah, exactly, especially with fans not being able to go to games last year uh, across sports, you know, especially in baseball. It's nice to be able to have that little song for people to sing as well during the broadcast. Second pitch to Wassel is swung through and missed, so 0-2 count. Minnesota with just two hits on the day. This pitch is high and outside, so 1-2 to Wassel. Minnesota Golden Goal for men's hockey is playing right now. We'll have to uh, get a quick score update for you on that, but the Minnesota Wild are leading 3-0 currently. This one's going to be flared to the shortstop, Houston, who will jog in and catch it about even with the base. So one out in the seventh inning for the Golden Gophers who are desperately looking for any kind of offense. I mean, just anything, a hit, a walk, hit by pitch. I mean, literally anything to get on base would be fantastic right now. Stepping into the box is number 44, Ireland, who will stay in to hit. First pitch is swung on and popped up behind the dugout of the Hoosiers. So it'll be a quick 0-1 count to number 44, Sam Ireland. 0 for 2 on the day. Gophers as a team are 2 for 19 on the day, which is a 105 average. This pitch is outside and high, 1-1. One one. Looking kind of like my average in high school, no big deal, but it's okay. Hey, that's better than 104, I guess. <laughs> that is true. I could have gone over 40. And that one's going to be high and inside. So it's going to be a 2-1 count to Ireland with one out here in the bottom of the seventh. That one up near his hands. He fouls it off, though, to stay alive. 2-2. Two -two. Remind you that Gopher Baseball has... A busy weekend. They have a very busy weekend. Play tomorrow at 4, and then they have a doubleheader in the afternoon evening on Sunday. So Rutgers is also in town. Ugly and, finder. And Ireland just fouled that one off behind him. I don't know. It didn't go through his legs, I don't think. But he almost hit a few teammates uh, standing outside the shipping container. That's tough to do, the angle he put that at. 2-2 two, two count, one out, that one inside. My goodness. And that's a strike three call on Ireland. And I just, it's got to be where we're standing, Connor, because that ball looked like it was inside and low. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just got to be the angle. And at some point, Minnesota, you have to know that he's been calling that strike all night long. So you're going to have to protect it at some point, and it's too late in the game to still be complaining about it. That is a great point. It's not like he you know, has been calling some. Hasn't, I mean, that's a pretty consistent call he's been making, that pitch that mm -hmm. looks like it's inside. So if he is given a few inches on either end of the plate, you've got to be ready to swing, especially we've seen the Gophers not swinging with two strikes. Now that pitch there is called inside ball one. But I thought that one looked more like a strike than that last pitch did. Yeah, I, I did too. That one was definitely a lot closer. Indiana infield pinched in the middle. Third base way off the line. As number 28, Jay Kelly, is up for the Gophers. Kelly flied out and popped out earlier in the game. And with two outs in the seventh, he's looking for the first Gopher hit in a few innings. Tommy Summers still cruising. This one's going to be fouled off of, looks like his foot maybe. Yeah. He'll walk this one off. Doesn't look too painful. Again, we see this Indiana defense, though. You know, Barr playing way off the line at third base. See if Minnesota can maybe poke one down that left field line. 
as left field is playing about straight up as long with the rest of the outfield. Yeah, got plenty of room on that left side, so you might as well try to use it. And this one's going to be popped up, and it's going to come back into the stands. Getting closer. Getting closer. That was in line with us, just didn't have enough juice on it to get back here all the way. Mm -hmm. Both bullpens quiet for either team, as Burchill has looked really good since he has come into the game. And Tommy Summer with 81 pitches has, you know, looks like he could maybe go this whole game. Yeah, he's been cruising. And just like that, he throws one down in the dirt, and Kelly swings through it. And that'll be the third out of the inning and another scoreless inning for the Gophers. So after seven, the scoreboard reads 4-0 in favor of the Indiana Hoosiers. We'll be back right after this on Radio K Sports. Sending out an SMS. Small sensations at your call. Because it's you who knows me best. Oh, yes. And it's hard not to give it all. I saw that you got the message. I saw you thought and then delete. Uh, you tried hard to suppress it. Your curiosity can't be beat. I said, hey, hey, long time no see. You were always good at bringing back the memories. Small talk is fine, no one and done. Without a chance that I could fall. You got me sending out an SMS. Small sensations at your call. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Radio K Sports live from U.S. Bank Stadium. Pitch number one from Birchill is swung on and missed by Jesse. Jesse's grounded out twice to second and flied out to center. Top of the eighth inning here in oh Minneapolis, boy. and he is no longer... Hitless as he oh my hit goodness. that one farther than Fucci did. Blasts it to right field. As I mean, Kelly didn't even flinch no, out he, in right field. He just stood there and adored it. A bomb from Jesse. Jesse, there. thank you. I was just going to say, this is the <laughs> part of the order where you really want to have a quick inning so that the top of the order for Indiana, who's done most of the damage, will start off the next inning in the, uh, in the ninth. Well, that's done now. Yeah, unfortunately for Burchill, who had looked pretty good up until that point. I mean, he just grooved it in the, in the zone right there. His pitch to Southern is fouled off behind the plate, so it'll be 0-1 count to him. Yeah, Burchill had looked really good up until that point had finally not only bottlenecked, but kind of stopped this Indiana offense. Yeah. And we'll see if things unravel here after that long home run from the Hoosiers. So it'll be one, one count with no outs in the top of the eighth. And even to this point, um, you know, Birchall's only given up two hits or three hits and two of those were pretty hard hit. But other than that, not much great contact has been made by Indiana off of him today. This one in the outside corner is called for a strike. One, two count. In uh, other Gopher sports news, Gopher hockey just scored again to pull within one of Michigan. 7-16 left in the third period. 3-2 Michigan leads. And it was Sample Ranta who scored for the Gophers. And Connor, you were mentioning, this is kind of the stuff we get into on the podcast. But, uh, you know, go for hockey, last two games of the regular season. 
need these two to win to get themselves into a favorable position for the offseason. Yeah, for and to win the Big Ten, too. And this pitch is inside and swung on and missed. So it'll be a strikeout for Burchill. Good response from him after giving up the long home run. So one out in the top of the eighth. Indiana leads five to zero over the Gophers. That's the exact response you want to out of a young pitcher is whenever they give up a long home run or give up any runs to begin with, then you want them to make sure that they continue to pound the zone and not be afraid to put one over the plate. Gophers have the middle infielders back deep and pinched. Corners are up along the baseline. First pitch is across for a strike. Outfield playing straight up, about normally where they play, not too deep. And we got some action now in both bullpens. This one lined over the top of the Indiana bullpen. They didn't even flinch out there. No, they just all sat there. They're all just hanging out, lounging around. Get a ball rocketed over their head. Just an every day's work. Houston, the number nine batter. Strikeout, a flyout, and a sack fly on the day. 0-2 count to him with one out in the top of the eighth. This ball in the outside corner is going to get called for ball number two. And that one needed to be just a little bit further inside, and he yeah. probably would have gotten the call there. Looked a little low, too. Burchill in the stretch. Will throw outside corner. Got him that time looking. There we go. Beautiful pitch from Burchill. And back-to-back -back strikeouts. So we'll have two outs in this eighth inning. Gophers trailing by five, and unfortunately... The men's hockey team is back down by two. Oh Michigan boy. scores again. And unfortunately, you know, obviously not watching this game, but Jack LaFontaine, who's usually so good, definitely having an off night unless the defense has disappeared. Yeah. So the Gophers will have to uh, pull out quite the comeback in the last four minutes or uh, get it together for tomorrow's game. First pitch from Birch Hill is a strike to the leadoff hitter, Ashley. Ashley with a strikeout and two singles on the day. One of those driving in a run. This one inside, ripped down the left field line, but foul. Nice bare hand grab by the Minnesota bullpen. Both these bullpens are very nonchalant. I like it. I guess if you spend enough time out there on the field, <laughs> you get used to the ball coming at you. You have enough rockets hit at you. We've seen the bullpen make a few good catches, though, for Minnesota today. Yeah, the bullpen catchers earlier today, taking them off the body, and then some good plays like we just saw right there. Indiana and Minnesota with one guy warming up each. Looks like Indiana might have a second guy up throwing the ball around. Burchill throws this one high and inside. So it'll be a one-two count with two outs in the top of the eighth. Minnesota back to a pretty normal defense. Middle infield playing pretty deep. First and third, back about halfway between each edge of the grass. This is high and outside, ball two, 2-2 two, two count to the leadoff man for Indiana. Ashley hitting 429 on the season. He gets a hold of this one, but it's going to be foul. A high fly ball down the left field line. And he will stay alive, a 2-2 count. Burchill at just over 30 pitches since he's come into the game. Not bad. He's definitely eating up some innings right now. He's at three and a third. So he's been doing pretty good coming out of the pen. He's definitely kept this game within reach for Minnesota. This is a hard ground ball. To the third baseman, Wassel on the run, throws. Nice grab by Sweeney at first. And Minnesota will get themselves out of the eighth, trailing by five. See what they can do when we come back right after this. Feel the 
the rhythm, feel the rhyme, get on the piss bop slit time. Sit and meditate, get into the flow of my breath and get my thoughts. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the bottom of the eighth inning here on Radio K Sports. I'm Trask Angel alongside Connor Mockney as Minnesota looking for something offensively as they need uh, to come up with five runs over the next six outs. First pitch from Summers swung on and missed by number 16, Bertrand. That was not a good looking swing. Tommy Summers at 86 pitches and looking like he might be able to finish this game. Especially if he gets through these next few guys pretty quickly. He's got the bottom of the order coming up. Bertrand gets under this one and will foul it back into the seats. So he'll be down 0-2 quickly here in the bottom of the eight. Even late in this game, uh, Summer is still attacking the zone, not afraid to go up against these hitters. And pitch number three is swung on a missed on the outside corner. So Bertrand will go down swinging and Summer will record his 10th strikeout of the night he's been effective he's been really really good up to this point i'd say that's a good way to put it he's been effective yeah <laughs> i mean just slightly just slightly <laughs> 10 strikeouts only two walks no runs and two hits through seven and a third and still under 90 pitches now batting for the gophers is stanky the catcher stanky a lefty and he watches that first one low, it'll be a ball. He's got a lot of room in that right center gap too. So let's see if he can pull one. Nope. He's gonna flip this one out to left field, gonna be a bit of a run. And Jesse will get there, no problem. So a little fly out, I guess fly out, pop out to left field. Yeah, short little fly. And so the Gophers with two quick outs will now see first baseman Sweeney come to the plate. Sweeney 0 for 2 on the day with two swinging strikeouts. He's looking to change that here as the Gophers average has plummeted to 87 on the night. That's, uh, that's not good. A lot of zeros on the board. And it's going to be another one as Sweeney dribbles this one to Summers, who picks it up and fires across. A quick and efficient eighth inning once again Very much so. for Indiana. And we'll be back right after this to bring you the ninth inning.
Hello and welcome back to U.S. Bank Stadium. Here we have Indiana leading 5-0 over the Gophers here in the top of the ninth. And we have a pitching change. We have number 43, Ryan Duffy, a senior left-hander, coming in to pitch in his first appearance of the year, taking over for Nolan Burchill, who did a pretty good job coming out of the pen. He did give up two runs, one long homer, but he did keep the game close. Yeah, we'll see what Duffy can do coming in here. You know, you're down 5-0, not really a lot to lose. Can you come in and get three quick outs and get this Minnesota team back hitting? Uh, this Indiana team has been pretty good at drawing out the pitches and drawing out the at-bats, so we'll see what happens here in the top of the ninth as this Golden Gopher team is trying to avoid a loss to start the season. Indiana looking to pick up their first win. And the first pitch is going to clip that outside corner. Consistent call. And that's the pitch that we've been complaining about when we've been hitting. But it is. It's consistent. It's been there all night. And that's a good spot to live as he's got Indiana 0-1. That one just a little too far outside, so it'll be 1-1. Batting for the Hoosiers is Richardson, who has got a walk but nothing else today. One of the few for this Hoosier team with 10 total hits. And he's in the top of the lineup. He's the two hitter. And everyone around him has two hits, two hits, two hits. So when you see that, oh boy, you're going to get made fun of by your uh, guys near you in the lineup. That's for sure. 2-1 <laughs> count to the hitless Richardson. Choppy ground ball to the shortstop stall and a beautiful running play by stall. Picks it up and fires across. We'll get Richardson for the first out of the ninth inning. Very smooth play over there at short. All in one motion, scooped it up, threw it on the run. Pretty nice. So Minnesota gets one. They need two more. And batting is the number three hitter. Bar for Indiana. Barr's got two doubles and two pop-outs. First pitch is slashed foul behind the Hoosier dugout into the stands, 0-1 to Barr. Minnesota's got this entire infield pushed back. Everybody out near that lip. Guarding the line relatively closely. Hard fastball, basically right down the middle. Freezes bar for a second strike, so it'll be 0-2 with one out. That was a good pitch. Ten total hits for Indiana on the day. Looking for their 11th. Duffy trying to get a second out. This one fouled straight back into the netting to keep bars at bat alive. Minnesota Golden Gopher men's hockey team Officially takes the loss to the Michigan Wolverines, 5-2. to two. They play again tomorrow for those hockey fans out there listening. Next pitch from Duffy is low. Ooh. So now we have a 1-2 count. That one had to have been close. Yeah, that one, was, that one looked pretty good from our vantage point. Duffy in the stretch. Looks in and fires. That one on the inside corner freezes up bar, and that'll be the second out of the inning. So Minnesota, two, uh, two, do two Hoosiers up and two Hoosiers down. Say that three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> number four Fucci is now up. Excuse me, number 21 Fucci is now up for Indiana. He's got a double and a home run, but has been quiet since. Pitch from Duffy, blows it by Fucci for the first strike. I think you got to come at him, throw it a little bit harder and a little bit more inside at him. Yeah, I mean, if you would have left that over the plate, I mean, we're talking about a 6 nothing game. But, uh, yeah, keep it inside. Keep it in on his hands. Again, blows one by him. Or just put it more over the plate. What do I know? Fucci way behind the ball right now. 0-2 count with two outs in the top of the ninth. Duffy looking for the 1-2-3 relief appearance. It looks like they're going to set up outside. 
Hits his spot, strike three. Caught him looking, and Duffy with a beautiful appearance. One, two, three, and Minnesota heads to the bottom of the ninth, down by five. We'll see what they can do right after the break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the bottom of the ninth, and the Gophers are at home looking for a big comeback, down five in their home opener, season opener. First pitch is a cross and a strike. Mm. That one was tough. Batting for the Gophers is number 10, Stahl. Second pitch is, was that behind him? I think so. It looked to be behind Stahl because he stands kind of close to the plate. It'll be a 1-1 one, one count. Indiana does bring in a new pitcher. This one is swung on and missed, 1-2. Brings in a new pitcher. pitcher. It's Braden Scott, number 18. Pitch count got a little too high for Tommy to return. Yeah, if this wasn't their uh, second game of the season, then I think he probably would have gone back out there for the uh, for the ninth. Check swing, he went. That'll be strike three. So Stahl goes down swinging for the first out of the ninth inning. And I think that just kind of exemplifies what we've seen all of tonight from this Gopher team hitting. Yep, absolutely non-existent with the hits today. And that at bat was just, like you said, a picture-perfect representation of how they've been hitting in the box today. Will height up for the Gophers. First pitch will be slashed to the left side of the field and bounce off of the wall over there by the bullpen. Will height been pretty quiet today. He's got a fly out and a pop out. Not much more. Only two hits for the Gophers, and they both came back to back in the same inning. Swing and a miss from Will Height on a pitch inside. It'll be 0-2. And Braden Scott looks just as good, if not better. Although it's hard to get better than uh, what Summer did today. Tommy Summer going full eight innings. Ten strikeouts. This pitch in on the hands of Will Height. He'll foul it off to stay alive. I want to thank everyone who listened in today and remind you that we have a lot more baseball this weekend and we have softball around the corner, so go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you like what you heard here, you know, go ahead and check out the sports hour. This one's lined up the middle and the Gophers have a hit. Will Height will get the Gophers going in the ninth inning, takes that ball right back up the middle. Solid single and exactly what the Gophers need to get something going here. That's exactly what the doctor ordered here. Uh, exactly what you want to see from this team. Not going down without a little bit of a fight here. 
So Minnesota with a runner on first. Just three of 26 today. And with runners on, they're 0 for 5. First pitch is going to be fouled to the first base coach. Oh, he missed it right through his hand. But the Indiana bullpen is there to grab it. Mm -hmm. He'd be getting booed if that was my team. <laughs> or if that was me coaching, I would have been getting <laughs> booed by my players. Second baseman Robbie in the box. Robbie, a right-handed hitter. 0-1 count with one out here in the bottom of the ninth. Gophers looking to come back. And this one hit hard to left field. Back. Back, back, gone! Minnesota has got a little life in them as second baseman Robbie puts that one hard to left field. And speaking of hard, the uh, left fielder, Jesse, smashed into that wall. Yeah, he went, I don't even think he realized that uh, there was a wall there, that that was coming up because there is no warning track technically here. There is no dirt, it's all turf. And it all comes full circle. We talked about the no dirt in the infield earlier today. And I think that's exactly what happened. He had no idea that he was up next to the wall because there's, I mean, they got a yellow line out there. You but mean he wasn't looking for the big dark yellow line out there? <laughs> so the Gophers on the board, little explosion of offense doubling their hit count right there. And there this one ripped to the right center field. That's going to be at least a double for Wassel, the third baseman. A little bit of life from the Gophers here. This is good to see. And what started off so well for Braden Scott has quickly turned into a disaster. He's got only one out. He's given up three hits, two runs, and we've got a guy on second. Yeah, and these have been pretty hard hit balls too. So it's not like these are little cheapies. So Indiana's gonna hit pause and have a little quick meeting at the mound. It uh, doesn't look like they have anyone getting ready in the bullpen. Doesn't although, look like it. Although they do have a catcher geared up and waiting. So we might see, we might see Indiana get someone else up. Still down by three though here. And we got a little Mission Impossible music going on on the yeah. speakers here. Still waiting for uh, Tom Cruise to come, you know, flying down from the Raptors here. Does feel a little impossible. Down by five going in the bottom of the ninth, mm -hmm. but you get the home run from Robbie. Now you're only down by three. And you got a man in scoring position. And you got a man in scoring position. And you have your number four hitter up in Ireland. He's 0 for 3 on the night, so he is, he is ready for a hit. He's due. First pitch from Scott is outside. 1-0 and oh to Ireland. That was a good take, too. That, that was a close pitch, and it, get, it got called uh, quite a few times throughout this game, but not there. This one is swung through by Ireland, so it would be 1-1. One and one. That was a big hack. We all know what he was looking to do there. It's got to be frustrating. You start your season, you've had three less than ideal at-bats to start it off. You didn't pitch as well as you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, bottom of the ninth, you have a chance to at least score one. I, you know, it's hard to hold yourself back and not swing as hard as you can. Yeah, got to redeem yourself. Two and one count to Ireland. Facing off against 18 Scott, the lefty from Indiana. And as he's getting ready to throw, timeout is called by Ireland. This may already be our longest inning of the game. Yeah, for either side. Ireland watches that one in on the outside corner. It's be called for strike two. Two and two with one out in the bottom of the ninth. Runner on second for Minnesota. Looking to pull this thing within two. Oh. And right where we've seen it happen how many times, inside corner called looking for strike three and Ireland will head back to the shipping container 0 for 4 on the night. And his last three at bats three strikeouts looking and those last two for sure were in the same exact spot. So the Minnesota Golden Gophers down to their last out. 
Bottom of the ninth, they trail two to five to the Indiana Hoosiers. With a runner on second, it'll be up to Jay Kelly, the senior. Also 0 for three on the night. He's one of just four Gophers now that don't have a hit. First pitch is high and called a ball. Be a one out count to Kelly who crowded that plate a little bit. Yeah, he's standing right on top, not allowing the pitcher to come inside. Watches this one over the outside half of the plate, called for strike one. This will be a one one count to Kelly as he looks to keep this game alive for Minnesota. Indiana, way off that left field line. Middle infield, about normal. First base close. Pitch outside, swung through. And you gotta believe that that next one's coming there too. Oh yeah, I would go right back to the same spot. One, two count, two outs, bottom of the ninth. Minnesota looking to stay alive in their first game of the 2021 season here at US Bank Stadium. Here's the pitch. Outside, and I think that one got the plate, but it was just a little high. Yeah, I, I looked like it, because that was almost the same spot we've been talking about all night. 2-2 mm -hmm. two, two count with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. The Gophers trail 2-5 to five to Indiana. Here's the pitch. Down the inside half. And unfortunately for the Gophers, Kelly watched it all the way. So he'll strike out to end this game. Gophers will leave one, and they'll trail by three. So they start off 2021 with a loss. Indiana will get their first win of the season. But the Gophers have three more games this weekend to make up for it. Connor, any comments before we uh, get out of here? Although the, uh, the Gopher offense had really struggled for the first eight innings, I think this last inning is really going to help bring some momentum to this team to bring into the, these next three games this upcoming weekend. So although this game didn't go our way, like you said, we do have plenty of game this weekend in order to fix what had gone wrong in this one. All right, everyone, thank you very much for joining us here on Radio K Sports. On behalf of Connor Mockney, I'm Trask Angel. We want to thank you for joining us here live on YouTube and remind you to like and subscribe as we have three more games this weekend and a whole lot more baseball and softball this spring. Have a good night, everybody, and we'll see you later this weekend. Okay.